Today we're going to do like an extended Nadi Shabna practice, which Nadi Shabna is alternate nostril breathing. This is kind of uh, the tool that they say in the tantras over and over and over again. If you want to remove duality from your life and really find balance, this is the place you start. Like this is like the basic breath for all of the pranayams for pretty much everything. Um, there's like six stages to it, and I'm finally after about a year and a half practice at stage three comfortably. <laughs> But I mean, with any of these things, everybody moves at different paces. Some people can master their breath, like in three days. Other people can take six months to a year, you know? It's kind of like, you know, opening up hamstrings. Some people are like, just like, they can touch their fucking, like they can suck their own dick or whatever. And like, I can't even do a proper forward hold after like a decade of practice. So, you know. On, like on, like on <laughs> No, the hyper flexible, it's, it's almost a curse sometimes because oh, like is. everybody else is like, they barely move and it's like, oh, I super feel this pose and the hyper flexible, they're just like completely in the deepest posture imaginable and just like, am I supposed to be feeling something? Like, I kind of like being on the other end of that stick and like, I, oh, yeah, I, I can definitely me. feel everything. Trust me, the, the, the not being able to get out of bed without 10 minutes of stretching is not fun. Mm. It's just like, hey, did you want to move today? Yeah. No! All right, so we're gonna tune in with the first two mantras on the sheet. Number one, repeat after me, Om. 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 Namo. Namo. Guru. Guru. Dev. Dev. Namo. Namo. And number two is Adgare Name. Adgare Name. Sat. Wait, Jigagare Name. Jigagare Name. Satgare Name. Satgare Name. Siri Guru Dev Name. You know, it seems like a lot. Um, the first one is uh, acknowledging the teacher that dwells within us and asking for its guidance through the guise of the word guru, which guru just means something that brings you from darkness to light. So it's not necessarily a physical embodiment of anything. It's whatever does that for you. Like some people, their guru ends up being a fucking car wreck and it just like changes their life and they wake up one day and realize, hey, I need to be way better. Like that inner teacher can be sparked by anything. It's just kind of like a creative source, you know, it dwells within us. And a lot of us actively against it as much as possible. And some of us are just really trying to like get to that creative center and source regularly. So let's bring our palms together and rub them briskly. Close your eyes down. If you know the mantras, if not, follow along. As I do, heart center on Jolly Mudra. Inhale. Exhale slow. 
Hold the breath out. Again, sit for a moment. Inhale. Exhale. Beautiful. So some people with mantras are so quiet, other people just barrel them out, not even giving a crap. I have one student who's tone deaf and just barrels. And it's a really big challenge for me as an audiophile to just like accept her because she always sits front row center and points her voice right at me and I'm a little like cringed. <laughs> and no, it's funny because we joke about it. She knows, but it's like, I, the more she practices actually, the more she's able to like, I think she's starting to feel the vibrations and able to match them opposed to hear them because she's getting like more stable. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, someday, someday. But, uh, we're going to start uh, moving the spine a little bit. So grab your shins, uh, just find a comfortable cross-legged position. <laughs> you know, you can have your ankles in front of each other. There's Siddhi Yona Asana, which is actually for the woman, you're, they literally instruct to separate the um, exterior labias and press the heel up into that like area and then stack the other foot on top of it. And for men, we bring the heel right in between the ball sack and the anus into the perineum and put a pressure there. And what this does is it stimulates our first chakra. So it's just like a, um, this is like the ascetic way to sit yogically. And of course, you know, Padmasana, which is the uh, lotus, but we do what we can. I just wanted to give the, the, it's just funny. You read these things and like there's practices where you're literally like, inserting your fingers into yourself. There's other ones where you're swallowing like cotton and then like pulling it out and it's like 12 feet of cotton. Like there's some weird shit they do for purification, man. And I'm like, <laughs> like how do you teach this in a studio? Someone walks in later. I think I'm in the wrong place. You know, I've taken it on, on as a like kind of life task to just um, continually study the roots of these things and kind of like look at the different paths and see the different practices, the dated ones and the modern ones and kind of uh, try to wrap my brain around the purpose of them and like whether they have validity today, which all of the purification things do, but would people, pal would they be palatable for people? One of them is snorting a small string of cotton up and pulling it out of the other nostril and oh, kind of doing God. this. Yeah, dude, like you look at this shit, the guy's doing it in the book and you're like, <laughs> Ow! <laughs> so let's grab our. On that note, we're not doing any of that today. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> grab your ankles. Um, eyes closed. We're gonna inhale from the pelvis and the lower back. You're just flexing the spine forward. Exhale, round it back. Start slow. Power your breath through the nose and close your eyes and really just focus on that sort of rocking of the pelvis back and forth. It may start small. Just inhaling, going forward, exhaling, rounding the spine, but really focusing at the low spine here. For men especially, connecting to the pelvis is challenging. We just haven't worked to free the muscles around them. For women, it's relatively natural, usually. Just mentally vibrate. The word sat as you inhale, nam as you exhale. Really find the depth of your breath. Next few, power, speed it up a bit, mentally vibrating sat as you inhale, nam as you exhale. Inhale center, hold the breath, gauge up on your root, Just slightly pull up on the perineum. Exhale, inhale, hands to your knees, exhale, 
We're gonna do some circles from the pelvis, but leading with the heart. So as you inhale, we go to one side and then forward, exhale back. Just kind of imagine your body as an off-centered top. There's a sort of axis around the neck and around the pelvis. Just make sure it feels good. Coordinate the breath with the movement. Don't worry about what it looks like. Just ensure that you're honoring whatever your body needs right now in this moment. Really get into that breath and movement correlation and sort of flow. You'll find there's just a natural rhythm that you have. And once we learn it, can intentionally alter it. This increases our neuroplasticity. Next time you're forward, reverse directions. And go slow, fast, change your natural rhythm. Either speed it up or slow it down. Inhale, center. Hold. Squeeze up on your rectum, your sex organs. Just holding that lower lock. This helps seal energy in. Exhale. Let's take a few breaths. If you need to stretch out your legs, go for it. Just really tune into your body right now. And if it's telling you to change your sitting position, do so. And so I'm sitting on my heels. As you inhale, really get the breath down into the navel center. Feeling that expansion that happens in the belly and then the chest, and that sort of separation of ribs and hips. As you exhale, the lungs contract, the belly contracts. A few deep, intentional inhales into the navel center. To the yogis, this is the seat of vitality. And Qigong is the lower dantian. the center of power, digestion, energy. A big inhale in, hold for a moment, and then let out with an internal sigh. So mouth closed, just sort of like a hum. Where do you think om came from? Sort of that guttural spiritual release of a vibration that we can all make. Every almost animal can make that sound. It is, it is that infinite. So we're going to come standing and do a couple sun, rounds of sun salutations. So Surya Namaskar. We're just going to do Surya Namaskar A. Yeah, standing up after sitting down for so long. <laughs> It's a, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. You notice as a yoga teacher, when you have a group of people, half of them will be challenged by sitting for more than five minutes. The other half will be challenged by standing for more than five minutes. Like, there's no appeasing a group completely. Oh, man, if it hurts your knees or if you get, like, twinges in your knees when you're sitting, sit up on things higher. Always adjust your leg, your sitting position. We don't want to feel sensation, especially in these side points or the front. Because if you ever start to feel pressure there, just come out. Whatever we're doing, just come out. Adjust. Because that, this little sensations turn into expensive surgeries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a torn PCL on my right. right. So you know. Yeah. 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 So definitely, if you were sitting, if you start to feel those twinges, honor them. Um, I kind of have a motto I like to go by. Always listen to me and listen to your body screaming louder. Because <laughs> if it's like... You know, if I'm trying to get you to do something you can't do, I ain't gonna force you. So step two. Top, top people in circulation, sitting. Yeah, yeah. So kick your uh, things out of the way. 
We're going to be taking up some space here. You step to the front of your mat. And then step about a foot back, just giving a little space to the front of the mat. Your big toes are together, heels slightly apart if this is available. And then bounce your knees a few times, bounce your hips, maybe bring your hands to the hip crease and just really feel this soften. Notice where your low spine's at. Close your eyes, press into your big toes, pinky toes, all five toes, the outside edges with the toes, the heel with the toes and the outside edges and the inside edges. So envision your feet like a square planting into the ground. Just feel this root, close your eyes for one moment, bring your hands heart center. Inhale, look up, Tap the arms up overhead. Exhale, fold from the hips, allow the spine to round. Inhale, flat back, elongate the spine from the tailbone. Exhale, fold, plant the palms, step or hop back to upward plank. So you're up on your toes, your shoulders and wrists are in alignment, your body is in a straight line. And on your next exhale, lower down slowly. If you need to drop the knees there, that's okay. Inhale, up dog, so your head and heart go up. Shoulders are relaxed and pulled near each other. Back of the shoulder blades and then exhale, down dog, tailbone to sky, making that beautiful triangle. So we really want an action of navel to thigh here. We're not rounding the spine. The shoulder blades are drawing near each other and they're relaxed. You feel your heart opening. This may not come natural, but try to like relax here. Yeah, that's a little better. We don't even know we can relax our shoulder blades until we do. <laughs> and then inhale, look up, step or hop to the front of the mat, flat back. Strong bend in the knees if necessary. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, center line. Close the eyes, plant your feet. And just notice, did you struggle somewhere? Did something feel off? Is that the smoothest thing you've done in your entire life? Always watch for holding your breath or gritting your teeth. These are signals that we're doing something that's a little off, it's out of asana. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold from the hips. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plant the palms, step or hop back. Lower down, drop the knees if you need to. Inhale, up dog. Really feel the shoulder blades drawing near each other. Feel the heart open, the head goes up. Exhale, down dog, tailbone to sky. You can pedal the feet out this time, just bend one knee. And the other leg gets longer. And just check in, if you're holding your breath, just intentionally breathe. Two more breaths. Four. Five. Step or hop to the front of the mat. Flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up. Exhale, center line. Let's take a few breaths here. Close your eyes down. Do not disturb me, your phone. side openers before we sit for an extended period of time. So let's step our left foot back and then let the feet, it's going to come between a 45 and a 90 degree angle and stack that front knee in angle. So we're setting up for an extended side angle. Kind of sink your weight into your hips a little bit and your um, pelvis opens up towards the long edge of your mat. Naturally it's not completely parallel. So just like bring your hands to your hips, make sure they're square, kind of relaxed. What? Are you squaring your hips this way? Or? To the long edge of the mat. Oh, so, okay. like this, 
it's, they're not quite squared usually, and everybody's kind of back foot goes where it goes, but consciously push into your toes and the ball of your front foot and the outer edge of that back foot. Kind of feel how that creates an oppositional pressure. And then if you squeeze your inner thighs just a little bit, it creates some space in your um, lower back. Do you feel that, that sort of engagement? You can just like hold yourself up, but then relax and drop it down. So inhale, lift the left arm up. And the next exhale, start to fold over that front knee and the heart stays open. And you can bring that elbow to the knee. And if you wish, you can drop that top arm behind your back. It's just a different pose. It's not, oh no, yeah, it's like this. Like healthily, Naaman. <laughs> the contortionist jams, like, oh. Don't mind me. <laughs> Just trying to stretch. <laughs> so just feel it really from your pinky to your pinky toe, like all the way up the side body. You feel that separation of the rib cage and hips right on that left side. And I can tell you, this is where a lot of our tension and pain comes from. Just right along this ridge that we're playing with. And that's why this might be challenging. Two big breaths. Gaze is just forward. Or like, yeah, wherever it's at. And then on an exhale, just sort of roll forward, make the feet parallel, toes point out slightly and just dangle on a forward fold, wide-legged. Can sway back and forth a little bit. Soft bend in the knees, we're not locking the knees. Your arms feel loosey-goosey like Gary Busey. The <laughs> head is soft. And then inhale, come up. We're going to turn to the other edge and just stack that knee and ankle and set yourself up for an extended side angle on this side. Take your hands to your hips and just check in, kind of create that oppositional pressure, really feeling the engage and then release. So inhale, right arm goes up, exhale, fold. This is a lot of time to Since you're like that, Naaman, you can put your hand all the way down on the floor. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That's just try not to like go to maximum on your joints. I know your joints are maximum. Just like imagine them being a little soft. Yeah. Go ahead. Two more big breaths. Just full, big, deep inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Time we're gonna come up. Keep that wide-legged stance, turn towards the long edge of the mat, interlace your fingers behind you. You can point the toes out or in a little bit, whatever's better. Most of us turning them out creates a little bit of an external rotation of the hips and creates space in the pelvis. And then inhale, look up. Exhale, draw the shoulder blades back and down, and then fold forward. Soft bend in the knees, you're not locking the elbows. And try to keep the spine elongated here, just really compressing the shoulder blades near each other with the long spine and that great groin opener. There's a good chance you're feeling this everywhere. Ooh, now I am. Two more big inhales. Really envision your spine elongating as you're inhaling. And just relaxing a little deeper as you exhale. <sighs> Release the arms. Fold a little deeper, allowing the spine to round and just dangle for one moment. Inhale, come up. Exhale. Palms together, center line, and just heel toe the feet together. Going to do dancer's pose because we're all dancers, right? <laughs> do you know dancer's pose? Everybody know dancer pose? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. This one's fun. So we'll start by, it's kind of a balanced posture, so face me. I'm going to be facing sideways just so you can see what it's supposed to look like. So start really putting, like, close your eyes and just envision your left foot really rooting. Feel all four corners of it. If you can't really feel them or you're not in tune to that, just say to yourself, my foot is very rooted. 
it is a square. So we start by bending the right knee and grabbing the ankle with the right hand and then bring the left arm out in front. We're going to kind of lean with that or lead with that left hand. The palm can be up or it can be facing the back wall, whatever is more comfortable and start to push that ankle into the hand on the bottom and sort of elongating out from that left arm. So what? it's... Uh, Tyler! <laughs> what? Do you have to grab your foot like this? I mean, I do. You can grab it the other way if it serves okay. better. But if you do it from the internal, if you look at my shoulder here and then look at it here. Here it's, it's like rolled down. Here it's opening. So it's a little bit healthier for the heart. Because this is a heart opener and a lower body opener. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're, we're not going for perfection. We're just feeling the ground beneath us and breathing. Hold on. You can stare right at the middle finger of that front hand. Woo. Yeah, actually being on the ground itself is better for balance postures because there's nothing under your foot to do. We shouldn't feel this in the knee. One more breath. And relax. Is that hard? Something I'm just on balance. Something to practice. Oh, my right leg is stronger than my left leg. Well, we're about to do the other side. So. <laughs> no, it's weird. When you, I, I can do that. I've done that before. But when you do it on the inside, it's, I almost it's a completely different vibe. Yeah. Yeah. But, that's like, but that's pulling the heart open and creating an expansion. Because I kind of look, when you're rolled like this, your heart's opening, you're like, making your shoulder blades relax, you're helping these, sh these things relax. But when you're forward, there's a level of engagement here. If you just feel like your muscles and play with these two different angles, and also think about that with poi and stuff, if you really like, um, I don't know, like work on that opening, then you're just, you become much more freer in the arms. It's like uh, Qigong is also really great for this because it's all about the looseness and just like feeling the flow. But that's besides the point. Let's put our weight into our right foot now. Close the eyes for a second and just feel that foot really plant. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, just see yourself energetically bond with the ground. And lift the left foot up, grab the ankle or the top of the foot. And then bring that right arm out. Take a deep inhale. And as you exhale, start to extend that right arm out, pushing the left foot into the left hand. Just feel really stable here. Oh, wow. If you kind of push into that back hand, you'll feel that engagement and it pulls you. It's a very natural thing. <laughs> Don't hurt yourselves. This is one of those things that with practice, it becomes easier. I'm just so interested. And look at this. Watch my eyes. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> hey, please. <laughs> I've really pressed into my balance pose practice with, and being able to close your eyes, it's, that's an accomplishment. It feels like an accomplishment. I don't really get excited about much. Like, <laughs> the day that I could do that with my eyes closed, I'm like, like, look at my eyes. Yeah. It's like people claim you get like less stable as you get older, but I've only gotten more, so whatever. Now you gotta work on hand balancing. Hand? I'm actually almost got my headstand. Oh, oh. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Almost got my headstand. Done. That's the first time I've done it. <laughs> I've been I've been trying every morning. So yeah, that's uh yeah, that's what you do, you just Keep on doing it, but doing it in my living room is so funny because I got all these things to fall into, so I'm like <laughs> super kind of like, Ugh. but it's cool. All right, we're gonna come see the. Is your bed still in your living room? No, I just just rearranged my house again. Every time I, I get really overwhelmed in life, I rearrange my house and it helps I me like you. focus. You know, it's like I just gotta like reset something. So when you put your bed back in the other room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. So Nadi Shaka. It's alternate nostril breathing. You'll always notice that one is more clear than the other, as far as like what the nostrils do and all of that, what the Nadis are, and like that. That's a whole class by itself. Um, but essentially, the left side is related to our. Um, 
it's the rest and digest. The right side is like vitality and energy. So you'll notice throughout the day, whenever you're feeling kind of creative, a lot of the times your right nostril is dominant. And whenever you're really kind of tired and relaxed, then it's the left. Um, and sometimes what we shoot for is equality to where they're always in balance and they kind of represent the three major uh, channels that you see in like the Kundalini symbols. You have Ida, Pingala, and Shashuna, which is the central channel, which is represented by the spine. Blah. <laughs> so we're going to be using Nasagata Mudra, which is the first two fingers right at your third eye. And we're going to be alternately closing the nostrils. So the left will be closed with the ring finger, the right will be closed with the thumb. And I will cue all of the switches. Your eyes are closed and focused up towards the third eye. We're going to be doing some long deep breaths here. So really just focus on getting the breath from navel to throat and then throat to navel. So come to the Nasagata Mudra. First two fingers into the third eye. Let's take a deep inhale together, both nostrils. Exhale. Close the left inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, switch, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Release the hand, Gyan Mudra with both, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Back to the third eye, Nasagata Mudra. Inhale deep, exhale, close the left, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Switch, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, release the hand. This time, middle finger to thumb tip, inhale. Exhale, tongue out. Inhale. Tongue out. Inhale. Tongue out. Inhale. Tongue out. One more time. Tongue out. Now open your eyes. Maybe kind of lightheaded. You feel kind of dizzy. But it's not like fainty dizzy usually. It's more just like I got so much oxygen in the last two minutes and my brain doesn't know what to deal with it. Know what to deal with, exactly. No, no. I used to open class with that and then I learned how I forget how to talk after. If you can't tell, like, it just gets me high. So I'm like, brain no work no more. Hello. <laughs> Um, I'm in front of people. What's a brain? Um, today we're gonna <laughs> Tyler through what? A muffin? Yes, drink tea. <laughs> but uh, that was Nani Shun No One, which they recommend to do that, which is close off, it's both nostrils, inhale, exhale, close one side, five breaths, the other side, five breaths, five breaths, free. 
really easy to practice on your own, really easy to do wherever. Like that is something that like, you know, five, 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 that's pretty easy to remember. And you're supposed to do it five times. So five, 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 and we only did it twice. Because we're gonna do number two, which is alternate nostril breathing. We're going to be inhaling one nostril for an equal amount of time, switching, exhaling the other, and then inhaling that one, switch, exhale, inhale. Switch, exhale, which I'll be cueing the switches, which switches our exhales, and I'll be cueing the inhales. So you don't have to think about that, and I'm gonna be counting. We'll start with four seconds on the round one. We're gonna do it probably like three rounds and try to get up to eight second inhale and exhale, which is reasonable. I can do 24 each direction, so y'all should be able to do eight, maybe. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and whenever we're doing this, at moments, if you feel your mind wandering, just A, follow my voice, but also see if you can feel the different parts of the breath. Can you feel like the nasal cavities? Can you feel it going the, down the back of your throat? Can you feel it filling into your diaphragm and then filling into your lungs? And can you also notice the difference in each side? Because an advanced practice in the, of this is closing off the nostrils internally and controlling the breath, which I can kind of do, which is kind of cool feeling. I'm like, wow, this actually kind of works. I kind of... I'm never gonna stick cotton up there though. I'll oh, never say never. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks from now. <laughs> you walk in and I'm like, doing this all. <laughs> I, uh, I got, got curious. Um, Which, um, sitting positions, you know, those ones that I offered earlier, another is sitting on the knees if this is comfortable and you can also do a toe squat. Like in the beginning, I would literally go from this to this to this, to this. And whenever you're doing like active meditations, you get pretty good at like switching the feet around, you know, without like actually moving your upper body. And just like, even this works, you know, this, 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 this. Um, yeah, there's infinite sitting positions. So that's another thing to kind of practice and play with is moving, changing your lower body position without using your arms. <laughs> All right, so Nasagata Mudra, Whew. third eye. Focus up towards the third eye. And then you take a deep inhale through both nostrils. Exhale with your other hand, bring your thumb over the pinky nail. This is an active communication mudra. Inhale, exhale. Close the right nostril with the thumb, inhale. Switch, and 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 Switch. We're gonna slow it down a little bit and switch. And switch. And switch. And switch and switch a little slower and switch. And switch and 
and switch. And switch. And switch. And release. Pinky and thumb together on the other hand. Just take a few breaths. It's okay. So that is a tool to help develop sensitivities to the power of the breath. You know, one of its powers is it kind of like just super relaxes you. Like it's pretty hard to do that and not feel a little doed out afterwards. Um, yeah, that might be just a whip or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> if I, I pair that with these other practices and I really, I call it Indica yoga because it like afterwards, man, it was one day I had two privates and they both wanted things like that. And then I had a class and I taught it three times that day. And by the end of the day, I just like, <laughs> um, like Hope was trying to get me to like have a deep conversation about something in part. And I was just like, not even able to like process anything. And so like, I just, yeah, sorry. I'm like <laughs> different university guys. How's Hope doing? Boy, she's she's good. She's good. She's good. So come lying on your backs for some shavasana. No. No. <laughs> so make it big. Make yourself big. Arms are at your side. Palms up. If you need to stretch out, move around a little bit. Go for it. I'm big. Yay! <laughs> well, I mean, just arms at the sides. Okay, get comfortable. You you want less, uh, no points of your body really touching each other. So your legs are far enough apart that your thighs don't touch. Your arms are out from your body. You know, just a few inches at least, but wherever is comfortable. Your eyes are closed. Your breath is deep. Just for a couple breaths, really feel that big, expansive nature the inhale and just release with a powerful guttural sigh just envision your whole body relaxing your palms are up ideally oh.
up at the back of your forehead. Eyes are closed. Just feel that space between the eyebrows, that dark space where we see subconscious images, conscious images, sort of like a psychic screen. So draw your awareness to this space and notice what comes into it. textures, faces. See yourself on the floor, completely relaxed. Just watch the layers of your mind unravel. Watch whatever's come up, just release and go. Self, devotion to self. There's an intention you're working with. Repeat it to yourself mentally. If you do not have one or it does not come with ease, just say to yourself clearly, I will heal. Vibrate this from your forehead. Deepen the breath, inhaling, exhaling with an internal sigh. into your body, wiggling your fingers, toes, wrists and ankles, and then a big full body stretch, stretch the arms up overhead, feel long, expanded, and then on your next exhale, hug the knees in towards the chest, wrap your arms around them, and just feel your, look, your spine be supported. You can start with very gentle rock side to side, beating with the knees. It's very small. It's giving yourself some space and grace to be still here. Just release, relax. Many of us activity comes natural, but relaxation is so foreign. When we try to do it with intention, we struggle. Finding that stillness in mind translates to stillness in body. Come center, lift the head up off the ground a little bit, kick your knees towards your face, gaining momentum. Inhale, rock back, exhale, roll forward, go the full length of your spine without touching your head to the ground. So we're really protecting the neck here. Just massaging out the spine, rocking back, rocking forward. Come all the way up to sit. Oh. Bring both your hands over your heart center. Just palms towards, left hand first, right hand on top, press in lightly. The mantra is mm. The letter M repeating, no need to open the mouth. Inhale. Mm. Find your own breath pattern.
out. Breathe. These the last few moments sit in stillness. Just a few breaths before we seal this space. together and rub them briskly. Three satnams, S-A-T-N-A-M, and a powerful om, one per breath. Feel the heat come to your hands. Anjali Mudra, heart center, inhale. So ourselves, our surroundings, may whatever needs to come up and out be released from ourselves so we can heal and walk our paths with grace. Thank you all for joining me today. Satnam. Satnam.